Hello friends, Coolio here and welcome back to the channel. Today guys, we're jumping into Skylanders Ring of Heroes for their brand new massive revamp update to their game. So if you guys enjoyed today's video and want to see more videos like this, then make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. So let's get into it because there is a lot of stuff to talk about with this game because with their new update that they've come out with, they've gone ahead and completely changed everything about this game. And I mean everything. The only things that are probably the same are the Skylanders, like the characters you can collect, and like the story. Everything else has been completely revamped. And let's go ahead and talk about some of those things. I'm not going to be able to cover everything because like I said, Literally everything in this game has been completely changed. But the first thing I do want to talk about is your team formation and the combat in this game. Now, if you guys played Ring of Heroes before, if you remember its combat system, it was set up to be a real-time slash turn-based style of a combat system. Basically what it was is there was like a timer that would kind of pop up and you'd have to activate your abilities and like go back and forth between you and the enemy. It was very fast, very quick pace. And honestly, I, I did enjoy the combat system in, this, in, that, uh, in that previous iteration of the game. However, they've gone ahead and completely rehauled the entire combat system. And now it's just a straightforward turn, uh, turn-based combat system between you and the enemy. Now, you have your mana down here at the bottom and all of your different characters' abilities as well. And almost every single character, and in fact, I think probably every character in the game has had their abilities completely revamped as well. So, like, if you played this before, if you thought you knew the character's abilities, it's probably completely different. Now, the thing that they wanted to do with the combat system is to make it more strategic rather than hectic like it was before, and to hopefully encourage people to come up with more interesting team building formations. Now, on top of the team building formations and stuff that they have going on in the game right now, before, they used to have it where you had three Skylanders and then you had a villain character, or like this little pet that you could get that you could put onto your team to add some little extra bonuses and like one extra attack every couple rounds or something like that. Well, they've completely gotten rid of the uh, the villain system of the game. Now, rather than having the three Skylanders and the little pet, you have four Skylanders, and then you have your protector, your guardian, I can't remember what it's called, but like your main character that has a special ability that you can activate. For my character, which is the activation right here, she does it so all my characters get an evasion rate up. There are other ones that you'll be able to unlock as you push farther into the game. Now, one of the main reasons why they did this is they wanted the combat system in this game to be more strategic and to allow people the time to decide how they wanted to activate their abilities, combos, and to set up a more complex team building experience to hopefully draw back in that sort of Summoner's War crowd because in the last time I visited this game, I did mention this game reminded me a lot of Summoner's War. Now with this big update with the combat and stuff, some people may not like it, some people may really enjoy the kind of slow paced turn based combat, but I will say the previous combat system, the reason why I thought that was unique is because it added, you know, a sense of quickness, a sense of uh, haste to it where you really had to think on your feet. This new one is pretty straightforward combat system that doesn't really stand out, but I do see kind of where they're going with it, hoping to kind of bring more strategy into it rather than just people randomly clicking on buttons and hoping, you know, things happen. Now, along with the combat system and all the massive character changes, they've also gone ahead and they've completely revamped the way that character progression works in this game. And it is crazy how they revamped it. So, in the previous kind of setup with all the different characters and stuff, you have all their different elemental types, right? You have air, life, death, fire, water, things like that, right? But you also had the four classes, which were attacker, defender, uh, support, and then the last one was expert. Well, they've gotten rid of expert. Expert doesn't exist anymore, so there's just the three basic attack, defense, and support. So there's a whole new, like, kind of, like, elemental system between those two where, like, some are stronger against others and things like that. They've also did it to kind of just, like, streamline all the different characters. A lot of characters have been, again, revamped and had their abilities changed left and right. And then even the character progression system in this game is way, way different from before. Now, if you guys have been on my channel for a while, you guys know I hate, hate shard systems in games. I've only seen maybe one or two games that have, like, implemented it, like, in a good way. Skylanders before they had a really bad shard system and a lot of people didn't like the summoning You know aspect of this game because you could get a really great summon But you'd only get like two shards and you need like 30 to summon a really rare character It was just super frustrating super super slow. They've gotten rid of that There's no more shard system in this game when you summon a character you get the character I love that but they've also gone ahead and revamped the progression system too. the revamp the system that they had before was pretty complex 
and had a lot of different mechanics behind it. This one is a lot more straightforward. It's basically just leveling up and then pushing your way through the awakening turbo super boost and the transcending system right here. So it's just step by step. So for example here, I've got wild storm. If I wanted to, I needed to, you know, level him up, got him to level 40, hit okay. He's now level 40. He's hit max level, which means I am now able to evolve him. So I'm going to need uh, some of these mid evolution splendors, which are really easy to get. You just take your previous evolution, your lower, you know, ones, combine them together. Hit okay. Now that I've got them, I can now go ahead and evolve him. Push his max level up. Very, very straightforward, right? Super, super easy. And then you've got the awakening system where you basically upgrade their overall skills. And I believe it upgrades a few of their little stats, but it basically turns one star into a purple star, then two purple stars, three purple stars, all the way up to like five purple stars. And then once you get them to five purple stars, their actual looks will change. You guys know me. I like that visual progression, so I'm glad that's in there too. The super boost mechanic is pretty interesting. It's sort of a horizontal progression system that they've added into the game. Something they didn't have before where you need to get these super boost keys. Once you get the super boost keys, again, you can just kind of combine them up together. Uh, what it'll do is it'll increase some of their stats, but it'll also unlock uh, skills or not skill slots, equipment slots for the characters. And I believe it also boosts up uh, the max level the skills can get to. Yeah, so max skill level, level two to level three. So another kind of added progression system to the game. But Everything's been streamlined, very precise. You just go from here to here to here to here. Super, super easy. Another thing that they've changed, and I, and it's similar to other gacha games, is the equipment system, but they actually do it a little bit differently, okay? So you guys have seen equipment systems in other games. Basically, you have the six, six slots. You get different stats on these different weapons. Sometimes they have different sub-properties. You put them in there. You can power them up to different stages as you power them up to different, you know, levels of the goals or whatever you get different uh extra bonus stats on top of it however the thing that's different with this game is rather than getting very specific items used for specific characters you get these general ethers is what they're called premium leg armor ether i can equip this onto any character it doesn't matter what character it is i can equip it onto any character and what happens is as soon as i equip it onto that character let's go ahead and just take a look at spyro here uh, so we've got the boots here, right? If I wanted to go ahead and equip this, it will now turn into Spyro's leg or Spyro's specific equipment. So if I were to remove this, if I were to extract it or whatever, I would no longer be able to equip that onto any other character, just onto Spyro. Now you'll probably notice there's no set effects on these equipment items. And the reason why that is, is now they've got a new enchantment system where you can get enchant scrolls that you can then put onto specific items gear to give them specific sets. And I kind of like this. It makes it so rather than you getting like, you know, an equipment item with a certain set on it that you know is going to be good for, you know, some kind of DPS unit, but the sub stats or the main set on it is really good for like a defensive unit. You don't have to worry about it. You can build the equipment item to, you know, specifically be for a defensive character. I like that. I think that's a good streamlined way. I think it's, you know, it's fairly interesting. Um, so yeah, so there you go. Like that's another really big major overhaul to this whole system that they've got going on here. And like I said before, there's no way I'm going to be able to go through and cover everything, but I do want to give you guys some sort of negative things still with the game. First of all, I still think the game is incredibly grindy and the extra kind of like, uh, activities and stuff that you can do in the game. I feel like it takes a while to unlock these. You, I could probably unlock the next, you know, these three right here. If I were to spend the next two hours kind of pushing my way through the story, three hours to push all the way to the dark subjugation. I still feel like it takes a little bit of time to unlock just basic gameplay elements that you're going to want to upgrade your characters. And the, even though the combat's been changed and streamlined and stuff, it still feels kind of slow and boring. And I found myself hitting certain walls within the adventure itself where my characters were like dying or losing, you know, within like Rainbow Valley or like the abandoned factory. Even things with like the challenges when I go through the Cyclops Ether Fortress to get more equipment items for my characters. I'm dying on the second floor, which means I have to go back and grind the first floor, get more equipment items to power up the current ones I have right now. It's just, it kind of stinks that so early on the game, I'm already having to backtrack and make sure my characters are strong enough to even continue to push on these very low basic stuff. Another thing that's just, I think is absolutely crazy is this guy down here is like, hey, check it out. I've got a special offer for you. I was like, oh, sweet. A summon package offer, offer only available for the next 35 days. 
starting at $30 for step one, $50 for step two, $100 for step three, and then you get this, uh, these summoning packs at the end. That's ridiculous. Are you kidding me? I'm not going to be spending $180 to get these summoning tickets. That is absolutely insane. For a step up summon kind of reward system like this, these prices are way too high. I don't care what items that they're giving. Sure, they may be really expensive or like a lot of great stuff, but it's just don't, this is not a good thing. Okay. This is so crazy expensive to me. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and just do some summons. Now, I will say this thing is another kind of interesting thing because when you first get into the game, uh, they are going to give you a special banner. It's not here anymore because I've actually already done it where you basically get to, get to summon 30 times on like a rotation and select which summon that you want. We've seen these in things like Epic 7 where you jump into the game, you can summon up to a total of 30 times, you know, 10 times or whatever. It's a total of like 300 summons, but you only get to pick one of them. And if you decide not to pick that one, you summon again, you lose that and you got to get whatever comes next like that. This game does have that. I appreciate it. The dumb thing about it is it costs 500 gems to get it. When every other game that I've played that has that in it, they're free. And like 500 gems, it really isn't a lot, okay? Like I got the 1430 after playing two and a half hours or whatever. It's just, it blows my mind that they're not, they're not giving that away for free. Because like every other game I've played, it's for free. But this one, they're asking us to spend 500 gems just to do it. I, I don't know. It's just... I think I, it feels kind of dumb to me, but here we go. We're going to do the summons. The thing is they don't have 10 times summon in this game. The most you can do is a five times summon. They have changed the summoning system as well. So do keep that in mind. Uh, let's go ahead and do this or like the summoning animations as well as they've changed the rarities of characters. There's no longer uncommon characters. It's just uh, premium, rare, uh, epic, and legendary. There's no uncommon characters anymore. So. we go it is a heroic super shot stealth elf a premium rocky roll a rare food fight this can be a rare fire type last zone i have i had him on my previous account and then another rare and this is going to be flash wing but my five characters there you go so we got my five characters Nice job. Let's go ahead and do it again. We got a death character. Crypt King. I had him on my previous account as well. This is going to be a heroic character. Or I think I said epic before. So heroic airstrike. Another heroic. This is a magic type character. Heroic uh, pop fizz. I already have pop fizz. This is another heroic. Heroic Jetvac. I already have Jetvac. Now, when you get a character that you've already had before, it gives you super boost key. So, auto super boost completed when you get uh, an additional character that you've already had before. So, keep that in mind. These guys are automatically super boosted when I get a duplicate. Once you've super boosted them all the way, I believe it just it transforms them into a special currency that you can use to upgrade other characters. Uh, so, we've gone ahead. We've done my... Uh, my gem summons but i do have uh five times summoning tickets and they are giving out a lot of summoning tickets for the next like two weeks i think you get like five a day so at least they're doing that you get like a total of like 140 or something so come on give me a legendary i think it's a two percent chance to get a legendary hero which is basically on par with a lot of other gacha games so this is a premium tough luck i think premium is the lowest rarity in the game now we got rare Spyro. I already have Spyro, so he's been super boosted. Cinder. Okay. Zook. Welcome to the team. Snapshot. Is this... I think I have... Okay, so we, there we go. So we got all these different characters. But yeah, that's how the summoning works in the game. The summoning animations have been changed. Yeah, the game has been... It, it's... It, basically a brand new game across the board it still feels pretty grindy but i am glad that they've gotten rid of like the shard systems i hate shard systems i'm glad that they've streamlined the combat and the uh the progression systems for all the characters it feels a lot more rewarding it's just i feel like you you are gonna hit sort of slow walls there's slow progression through the story and unlocking a lot of stuff so guys hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video if you guys want to see more videos like this again make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel well friends my name is coolio and i'll see you next time